Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 4. So the first question in today's test requires you to know a little bit about how to read circle graphs and also how to calculate percentages. So the question reads, Carl contributes $150 to his 401k retirement plan. His employer matches one third of his contributions. How much of his contribution goes to real estate? Here, the first thing that you should do is to actually find out how much money in total is going to his 401k. So he, we know that he contributes $150 and his employer is going to match one third of his contributions. So one third of $150 would be $50. So in total, Carl is going to be putting $200 into his 401k. The next question to ask is, um, for every dollar that goes into his 401k, how is that distributed or what percentage goes to which investment? If you look at the bar, excuse me, the circle graph and you look at the title, it says 41K dollar investments and then it says in parentheses cents. So what this is telling you is that for every $1 that he invests, 40 cents are gonna go to public bonds, 13 cents are gonna go to private bonds, 25 cents are gonna to go to the stock market, 17 to real estate, and five to CDs. So if we look specifically at how much of that money goes to real estate, real estate is the red slice of your pie graph, and it's 17 cents. They're asking us for a percentage, so what we would do is you multiply those 17 cents times 100 to get 17%. And now you can actually go and do the problem to answer how much of his contribution goes to real estate. So here, what you would do is you multiply those $200 that he has invested times 17%, and that gives you $34. So the answer would be B. Question two looks at inequalities. And here they're asking you to solve this um, inequality. So it says 13 is less than 2x minus one. So the first thing that you do is you want to try to isolate that x. So you would um, add one on the left side, excuse me, on the right side. And that way those two numbers are gonna cancel out. Remember that you have to do the same thing on the opposite side. So you end up with 14 is less than 2x. And then to isolate that x, you have to divide by 2. So you divide 2x by 2. That's going to cancel out. And remember, you have to do the same on the opposite side. So your inequality is 7 is less than x. Question 3 is a number line question. So here they're giving you a number line with a series of fractions and they're asking you what is the sum of a plus b. And they tell you that a is 7 eighths and b is negative 1 fourth. So this is what they're asking you to add these two fractions. If we remind ourselves about adding fractions, remember that the rule is that for you to add fractions, they have to have the same denominator. And the denominator was the number in the bottom. So in this case, the common denominator would be eight. And what you have to do for your second fraction is that you have to increase, multiply that number, that fraction by two, so that you end up with the denominator of eight. So you would say one fourth times two uh, times two over two, okay? That gives you seven eighths plus negative two over eight. And now remember that to add a fraction, what you do is that you add the top numbers, the numerators, so seven plus minus two would be five, and then your denominator, the bottom number, would remain eight. So your answer is A. 
Question four is a problem that looks at scientific notation. And remember that scientific notation is just a method that we use to express and work with numbers that are either very large or very small. And we usually express these numbers with an exponent, okay? And the exponent, what it's telling you is the number of times that you need, that you've moved your decimal point. So in this case, they're telling you that scientists estimate the distance from the Earth to the Moon to be approximately 238,000 miles. What is the number expressed in scientific notation? Okay, so we have 238,000 miles, and we said that we're going to move our decimal point to the left. So we move it five times. So the answer would be 2.38 times 10 to the fifth power. Okay, again, that exponent is telling you how many times you've moved your decimal point. The final question looks at uh, figuring out patterns or sequences. So it asks you, what is the next number in the sequence 5, 11, 18, and 26? All right, so if we look at these numbers, and I already gave you the answer there, um, what you would do is try to figure out if there's a pattern between each of the numbers. So between 5 and 11, basically, uh, to, to go from 5 to 11, you would add 6, right? And then to go from 11 to 18, you would add 7. And to go from 18 to 26, you add 8. So that's the pattern. It increases uh, by one number each time. So then the number after 26 would be 35 because you have to add plus 9. Okay, folks, that's all for today. I hope you found that useful. If you did and you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, folks, stay positive and stay strong. Have a terrific day. Thank you for your time and thanks for watching.